Well, good morning and welcome to the program today. Thank you for joining us and Happy New Year. Wow, cannot believe that this is the first day of 2017. What a whirlwind 2016 was. There's so much that has happened this past year. We've had, we've experienced the the good, we've experienced the the not so good, and people have experienced the tragic. And you know, my heart just has, has been overwhelmed these past few days just thinking about all the people that have left this world in 2016. You know, here at the, the end of 2016, it was like people just started dropping off like, just one right after the other not only people that we know but people in the entertainment world just boom 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 people have just started dropping out into eternity and that just makes me so thankful to have that assurance that jesus christ is my lord and savior and that you know you don't have the promise of tomorrow i i tell myself that i tell other people that why are we trying to live so far into the future when we only have one day at a time and there's an old song that used to say one day at a time sweet jesus that's all i'm asking from you give me the strength to do everything that i have to do yesterday's gone and tomorrow may never be mine you know that song is so true because there's so many people that made plans for next year and they did not make it into this next year and i'm just grateful that we can have peace in christ jesus and if you've experienced uh trials or <clears throat> excuse me if you've lost a loved one i want you to know that that i've been praying for you all those that have suffered the loss of uh, somebody they've loved or if you're going through sickness or whatever you may be facing i want you to know that we're praying for you i may not know your name i may not be able to call that out before the lord but i do pray for for God's people and I pray for salvation to come to those who are not and you know I've just kind of had a, a burden on my heart like I said about people and and the souls of man and you know I saw recently where a, a, a very well-known entertainer uh, lost her life suddenly and 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 then I have a very dear uh, person I know who is a friend of mine who lost her mother and one of them's testimony was about the great career and the great um, life she lived in the public eye and then also about all the things that she faced in her own personal life and the things that she encountered you know bad things that she faced that she had to to deal with and she how she handled it with different means and substances and then i think about this lady i know whose mother just recently went on to be with the lord actually she died the day after christmas and you know her her story in her obituary is about the life she lived for christ and how she sowed into the lives of other people how she touched so many with the great love of god and how she taught sunday school and how she was in church and how her life i mean even before her son-in-law was her son-in-law he was in church and she went to the back row where he was and got him by the hand and said you're going to get saved tonight and the man became a christian and has touched probably thousands of lives for Christ and you know it's amazing the difference in the testimonies that we leave behind and that's what I want to talk to you about this morning but before we do I just want to encourage you to listen and have ears to hear and I want to pray and my prayer is that the Lord would bless you and that the Lord will keep you and the Lord will open your eyes and open your ears and open your spirit to what I'm going to speak about today because you know this is the side that we can reach you on this is the side where we can get to you once we cross that great divide there's no more gospel there's no more salvation there's no more hope for the lost and once they make that final crossing that's it so my job is to go to that 
pulpit to try to pull you out of the pit of hell and out of the pit of destruction. And so I pray that this message today will begin the process of you turning your life over to Christ if if it doesn't go ahead and just invite you to him today. But I want to read some scripture to you and I want to talk to you about two different men today, just like I talked about these two different ladies. Well, it's in the book of Luke chapter 16. He's And there it starts in verse 19. It says, And there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And I want to stop right there and say, you know, he was a rich man. He was a man that well had had very good means. He was a a rich man that could wear purple and fine linen. And he, he fared so well that he had more than his share. He had more than enough. And, you know, that kind of reminds me of the life of this person we talked about earlier. They had everything money could buy, and and yet they had uh, troubles and trials in life where they had no peace and they had no joy. And then there's this other scripture in beginning in verse 20. It says, But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus who was full of sores, and the dogs came. And he, well, he, and he laid at this rich man's gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. But instead, the Bible says, the dogs came and licked his sores. And so it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. I want you to, to listen to that. There's something right there I want you to hear. Now, the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. But when the rich man died, the scripture simply says he was buried. It says nothing about the angels coming and carrying him to heaven or to hell. It just says he was buried. In other words, he was dead. His life had ended. His time for salvation and redemption had ended and his life was wasted and he was buried. And it says, and being tormented in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Now, let me tell you something about this story. Many times Jesus spoke parables to his disciples. And you'll see that where it says, and he spoke a parable or he spake a parable. And Jesus told them a parable. But as far as we know, and as it has been studied and searched out, This was no parable. This was told as an actual story of an event that Christ was sharing with these people. And it says, and he saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And it says, then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that your li- in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. Now he is comforted and you are tormented. You know what? I'm going to stop right there and say something because this life is not forever. We're not going to live in this life forever. The servant Moses made a statement. He said, I would rather suffer with God's children for a season than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. See, people think that this is all there is to it. We get caught up in the moment. We get caught up in what we're living and how we're doing. And where we forget that this is not eternal. We forget this is only a place we're passing through. We are granted life for a season. And once that has come to an end, then what are we going to reap? We're going to reap whatever we have sown in this natural life. We're going to reap it. And if Christ has not been a part of that natural life, then he's not going to be a part of eternity. But if he has been a part of your 
natural life. And I don't mean just a part, but I mean he's been your Lord. He's been your Savior. Church isn't just something you do. Religion is not just something that you have, but you have a relationship with Christ. And you go to church because you're in love with him and you want to learn of him and you want to be with his people and you're just hungry and thirsty after him. And you've lived a life of righteousness, not that you've been perfect, but that you have been striving to walk the straight and narrow way and you have made God the center of your world and Christ your Savior, then Christ will be a part of your eternity. He says here, he says that you enjoyed these pleasures in your life and now you are tormented. He says, and besides all of this, he says, even if there was, you know, uh, something that could be done, even if it hadn't been that way, then there's this great big thing that I can't can't take care of or do anything about. He says, and besides all this, between us there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot. In other words, if anybody were to see him in his torment and he wanted to go to him and help him, they can't do it. They can't cross that gulf. Nor can those from there, from where you are, pass to us and so the rich man realizes he's in a peck of trouble he is in a eternal eternal state of damnation and there's nothing he can do he can't get help and help can't come to him and so what he begins to think about are the people that he has left behind and then he says and then he said i beg you therefore father that you would send him to my father's house for I have five brothers that he may testify to them lest they also come to this place of torment see that tells me right there that in hell we have our full capacity to remember that we remember everything and every time every chance that we had that we rejected Christ that every time that he pulled at our heartstrings or you heard a message like this that you said oh, I got plenty of time that's not for me she's just rambling on I don't want to hear that mess I don't have time for that in my life you know maybe when I'm old I'll have sown all my wild oats I'll have done everything I wanted to do I'll be too old to do anything maybe then I'll invite God into my life but we don't know that we'll ever make it to that time that we will can't just say hey I'm gonna come to God see there's a condition the Bible says that a man can't just come to God his spirit has to draw you to him and right now I feel his spirit drawing people to him through his word and it says that he begged him to send his bro- send this Lazarus to his brothers and Abraham said they have Moses and the prophets let them hear them and he said no father Abraham but if one goes to them from the dead they will repent But Abraham says to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one should rise from the dead. Now I want to tell you something today. Just because somebody were to come back from the dead, it doesn't mean people would listen to them. We hear stories all the time of people that have had outer body experiences. We hear of people that have had after death, after death, you know, after life experiences by dying and going into the presence of God. And they come back and they write about it. And they talk about it and people don't believe it. And so he says, I've given them the prophets. I've given them preachers. I've given them evangelists. I've given them people that will speak my word. And if they're not going to listen to them, then that's the only hope they have. So don't turn a deaf ear to this message today because this message is based on one thing. And today I wanted to begin a series talking to you about this. Maybe we'll run it through January, however the Lord leads. But I wanted to begin a series talking to you about the love of God. And you read this story and you say, oh, that's not the love of God. I love How can a loving God send a man to hell? Well, see, God doesn't send us to hell. We send ourselves to hell. God has put 
everything in place for you and I to never have to go to that horrible place. He sent heaven's greatest treasure. He sent his son that he would die for us and we could have eternal life. And what we have to do that is that we have to obey and we have to receive him as the Christ and invite him into our life and ask him to wash us our sins away and make us his child and then to teach us how to live a life of righteousness and teach us how to have self-control and how to love one another and and how to you know battle the things in life that come god has put all that in order and he has given us these principles to live by so god doesn't send man to hell man sends himself when he rejects the gospel of jesus christ but here is the gospel being preached to you this morning that there is a way and it is the way to christ jesus see he says there's a way that seems right to a man but the end thereof is death see when we walk in what we think is right and what we think is okay without christ then it leads to death. But when we walk according to the principles written in the gospel and we accept him and we walk with him, he will teach us what is right and teach us how to go. I preached a funeral of a relative this week, you know, and it was really really a sad situation. There were a lot of people there that I'm sure maybe some of them had never even darted the doors of a church. But, you know, I began to pray about what do I need to share at this woman's funeral. And this is what the Lord gave me was this story right here because there were so many sitting there. And just like I preached at her funeral, I wanted to talk to you about that because, see, just like there were two men in this story, there were two women that I used earlier in, in the beginning of this program. And at her funeral, there were two women I used. And one of them was her, the this woman, and my mother because they were relatives. And I talked about the differences in their life. But yet I also told them, I said, let me, let me just say this. I'm not here to preach this woman's funeral. And when you say that at a funeral and that family's dependent on you, many times they kind of look at you a little bit strange and wonder then why are you here but this is what I told them and and this is something I want to share and get into your spirit I could not preach her funeral I could not do that because she already had and she had already laid the foundation of what would be said on this final day of her body being above ground on earth that this is the only thing I could do was share her story. See, that time's going to come for all of us. And, and just like these two men in this scripture, just like these two women that I've talked to, talked about they both crossed the chili jordan the same place they both crossed it they both wrote the script to their farewell message they both each one of these people had funerals i'm sure maybe the beggar didn't maybe nobody cared nobody missed him but don't you know that rich man had a fabulous sending off don't you know that his family and and all they they did everything to make sure that his life was remembered and here he was they're celebrating his life and they're celebrating his his death and sending him off with this great beautiful funeral and he's in the the bosom of of hell crying out for somebody to just come put a drop of water on his tongue and send back word to all them that are having the funeral to say stop this is not what it's about stop Get your life right with Jesus. Get your life right with God. Get your life right because this is a horrible place. In the end, we see that the one that enjoyed the pleasures of life, in the end, he became a beggar. And the one who had been a beggar became the richer of the two. Heaven takes note of every story that we are writing. He, they, it takes note of my story, of your story. Well, you know, there's no goody-goody two-shoes here. We're just talking about heaven takes note of our lives. I've been reading a book. 
I have kind of put it down to the side right now. But I started reading it after my father passed away. And I was reading it about heaven. And that's what the title of it is. And it's about a preacher that had a, an experience where he went into heaven. And God allowed him to come back into his body. He was dead for eight hours. And after eight hours, he was allowed to come back into his body and finish the work God had called him to do. But he said while he was there, he saw a book a library full of books and in these books different things were written and as he, he was telling that he gave scripture about it and it's in revelations 20 and 12 it says and i saw the dead small and great standing before god and books were opened another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the book what are you doing right now it's being written down what are you saying? What are your actions? How are you living? It's being written down. If you're waking up on this New Year's Day in bed with a person that's not your spouse, it's being written down. Don't turn the radio off. Let the Lord minister healing to your broken heart. Allow the Lord to come in and speak into your life. See, our lives are being recorded. And this man talks about how that when he was there in heaven and he saw these books, he said he took a book and he opened it and, and, and several books several pages into the book they were blank pages and he had to thumb through the book for a little while before he came up on the writings that were in and recorded in this book and it began you know with this person living a christian life and the man asked these angels that he saw he said why are there so many blank pages before you get to the writings in this book and the angel said those were, used to have words on them. They used to be works written in that book. But they have been blotted out. They've been erased and nobody knows what happened to them. Nobody remembers what they said. Not even God. See, the scripture says that in Jeremiah, he says that, he said, I will blot out their sins and remember their iniquity no more. He will forgive our iniquities. That's Jeremiah 31 and 34 if you want to go read it. And people say, well, I've been too bad. I've done too much. You don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. Let me tell you something. God doesn't care. You've not been too bad. You've not done too much. You haven't crossed an invisible line somewhere that has sealed your soul. You are redeemable. You are worth every drop of the blood of Jesus. But praise God, it only takes one drop. And here I am trying to, to, to share this good news of the gospel with you because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting or eternal life see he loves us so church he loves us so much he loves you that person that's listening to me today that you say i haven't been to church in ever in my life or i haven't been in years or i heard this when i was a child or i've seen too many hypocrites in the church forget the hypocrites in the church they need to hear this message too because you know it's going to take the blood of jesus to cleanse all of us but you can't look at another person and judge your life by justifying your life by judging their life you have to stand before god for yourself before I go uh, run out of time, I want to finish this up this morning and, and tell you another thing. You know, on a headstone, you'll find three things. There's the date of birth, and then there's that line, and, and then the date of death. Well, which one of those would you think was the most important? Some people would say, well, I think it was the most important when they died. But no, the most important line on that headstone is that little dash between the day you were born and the day you died. You say, how can that be the most important? Because that's your lifeline. That tells the story, what you did from the day you were born to the day you died. What does that line say about you? What's written on your lifeline? What are you using the life the pen of life to write on your headstone what 
is being written for your funeral. In other words, what's being written for the day you die? Is it being written, oh, they they had this great career, they they were rich and famous and, and, and they were always known wherever they went and, and they, they did all this wonderful stuff. They wrote books, they they did all these great miraculous things. But nowhere on that lifeline is it written, and they accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You know, I'd rather my headstone say she was poor, and she lived a life of of poverty, and lived in a shack, but on such and such a day, she accepted the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and she lived a life of righteousness and holiness to the best of her ability. No, she wasn't perfect, but she did the best she knew how, and she did good things for people, and she loved people, and life wasn't all about her. I'd rather my headstone, my dash, my lifeline say something so simple as that than to say all these great things and be lost forever. Scripture says, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What does it profit you to work, 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 work all the time? You say, what well, profits me because I get to live in this big fine house. I get to drive this beautiful car. I get to have my name on my desk. I get to be the president or I get to be the vice president of this company. I get to travel. I get to do all these things. I get to have the money I want. You know, I've had people tell me I've got more money than I know what to do with, more than I'll ever spend. And yet they're miserable because they don't don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. What would a person give? What would the rich man have given if he could have gotten out of that situation? What would he still give today? What would anybody in hell give to have one day to make it to the altar and repent of their sin and ask Jesus Christ into their life? And you know what's so wonderful about it is we have been given this great opportunity. We have been given this. It's not too late. You know, people might say or think that, but the story for you is not over. If you're listening to this program, if you're hearing my voice, there is hope for you. If there was no hope for you, you would not be hearing this program today. God would wash his hands and he would just let you go and and believe a lie and and damn your soul to hell. Your Yourself and and but there's hope for you and you're hearing about this hope today the rich man's message is being preached to you to not come to this awful place where he is at now he is saying don't come to this horrible place where I'm having to be don't come here but listen to the voice of the prophets listen to the voice of the of the preachers listen to the voice of the evangelists listen to the voice of the pastors listen Listen to the voice of the teachers. Listen to the voice of that little old mama that keeps trying to tell you you need to go to church. You need to get your life right with God because we are not promised tomorrow and God loves us so. He does not want us to go to that horrible place called hell. He wants us to make it. He wants us to live with him eternally. He wants us to be with him. And he wants us to have life everlasting. What a beautiful message of the love of God. That God doesn't want us to perish. He said it's not his will that any man should perish. Oh, if I could, if I had the ability, I would reach out of myself and I would reach into your life and I would pull that soul out and I would show you how much Jesus loves you and just what an awful place hell is just so that you would wake up and realize there is a better way there is a better life there is something that can be done about your situation and his name is Jesus his name is Jesus and what better way to begin this new year than than to begin it with a new life you know, my, my friend that I was telling you about, my cousin that I did her funeral. You know, there's another scripture talks about a rich man who's, who had plenty. And yet he said his barns didn't hold it all, so he's going to tear them down and build greater. But the greater never came because the Bible said that night the angels came and said, this night your soul is required of you. One day our souls are going to be required of us. And when they are, there's nothing we can do to stay. Which way will yours go? Please, give your heart to Jesus. 
and allow him to take you into his presence. And I want us to pray real quick before we go off the air. If you don't know how to reach him, if you don't know how to pray, all you got to do is say this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I acknowledge my sin. I ask you to forgive me and I ask you to cleanse me by your blood. Come into my heart and do in me what you need to do to make me your child. And I thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. And now out of everything you've heard me say here today, remember this. When you realize just how much Jesus Christ loves you and you surrender your heart and life to him, that is when you will experience your greatest defining moment.